This video is about a formalization of missile soft kill. Now, broadly speaking, there are two ways to prevent a missile, a guided missile, from hitting its intended target. One is called soft kill and the other one is called hard kill. Hard kill means physically destroying the missile by hitting it with bullets or another missile or by causing it to hit, for example, the sea surface or the ground or a building or a mountain, but the missile is physically destroyed. Soft kill means affecting the gui missile's guidance loop so it, its flight path doesn't pass through the target. Now we do this by applying deception or distraction to the missile seeker head uh, and that means using a jammer or decoy or chaff or interfering with any guidance inputs that the missile uses, for example, GPS if it uses that. Uh, but there's a difference, a big difference, between soft kill and hard kill. In the case of soft kill, the missile is still in the air. It's still flying, but it can't hurt us. Now, there are many possible definitions of soft kill. I'm only talking about my definition. And frankly, despite all the talk I've heard over decades about soft kill, I've never heard anybody define it. So here it is. Soft kill, according to me, is, occurs when the missile develops an unrecoverable heading error. That means the missile is not agile enough to correct the heading error, and I mean, in other words, it can't pull enough G's to correct the heading error. Uh, so it, the missile misses the target by a little or a lot. We can talk about the, how much a little or a lot later. But it is certainly logically true that every missile that ever missed its target did develop an unrecoverable heading error. Now, I know we know this because as a missile flies past its target, it's not going to hit. There comes a point where it would have to pull 100 million G's in order to correct the error, to fly at like an instantaneous right angle to hit the target, and it can't do it. So at some point earlier on, it passed the point at which the, the, the airframe can't provide enough lateral acceleration called latex to correct the heading error, and that is the moment of soft kill. Now, uh, it's important to say that uh, even considering just the uh, a concept of an unrecoverable heading error, there are other possible definitions for soft kill in the group that I've defined, but going through those other ones are out of scope for this particular video. The concept of soft kill defined as an unrecoverable heading error leads directly to something I call the intercept corridor, which looks like this in a single plane. It looks like a corridor. Uh, for example, for a sea skimmer missile attacking a surface ship. And since I just mentioned heading error, that immediately implies a target identity because heading error relative to what? So we can right away realize that soft kill implies the identity of the target. And 17 seconds of thinking about that reveals that if there is one missile in a bunch of targets, then soft kill occurs for each target at a specific time and missile location. Soft kill occurs individually and specifically for each target, and I'll come back to that in a minute. And by the way, the definition of soft kill is not limited to the missile physically hitting the ship or aircraft or whatever the target is. So the soft kill definition could mathematically stipulate a minimum missile miss distance. In other words, the intercept corridor could be formulated to ensure that it is physically impossible for the missile to come any closer than pick a number meters from the target. Now, in my experience, it's just impossible to overstate the importance of the intercept corridor in using soft kill to defeat guided missiles. Soft kill is what the countermeasure is supposed to make happen and it's also a possible feedback path for cognitive jamming. If the jammer or decoy changes its own behavior and the effect of that change is to move the missile closer to the soft kill condition, then you know, do more of that. And the converse is also true. So that's a negative feedback loop, control loop. So we can incorporate soft kill into a countermeasure control loop and that applies to onboard and offboard countermeasures including and especially control of the position and speed of one or more offboard decoys. That's an interesting problem. Solution actually. So here's an interactive animation of the intercept corridor applied to a surface ship since the intercept corridor properties are more clearly understood in a single plane. This is the Engage soft kill application. There are several views available and maybe the plan view is the clearest to illustrate a few properties. The magenta lines are the intercept corridor. The straight light gray line is the instantaneous missile heading. 
The dashed gray line is missile flight path for the current heading error rate. And the orange dashed line is the maximum lateral acceleration recovery path to hit the target. In order for the missile to hit the ship, the missile must stay inside the intercept corridor throughout its flight. As the missile heading changes, the corridor swings around. It looks like this. The corridor ends at the target, and the width of the target is the diameter of a circle comprising the closest permitted range between the missile and the target. I call this the protection range. The intercept corridor is defined so the jammer or decoy or decoys, plural, or whatever, has to keep the missile at least this far away from the ship. Soft kill happens when it's physically impossible for the missile to get closer to the ship than the protection range. Now, increasing missile speed, this is interesting, causes the corridor to become longer and skinnier. All things being equal, if nothing else changes, a high-speed missile needs to be pointed right at the target from a relatively long range or it'll miss. Now, also interestingly, this can be fixed by increasing the missile's maximum lateral acceleration. The designers would have to do that. And I, and I mean how many Gs it can pull. So the intercept corridor formalizes the relationship between missile speed, missile maximum lateral acceleration, in other words, how many Gs it can pull, and the worst case miss distance. That's the closest the missile is allowed to come to the target in order to cause soft kill, which means the missile is physically impossible to hit the target. Here's something interesting concerning the shape of the intercept corridor and hypersonic missiles. Missile speed is antagonistic to maximum lateral acceleration concerning the shape of the intercept corridor. As the missile speed increases, the shape of the intercept corridor becomes longer and narrower, which means that near the end, near the target, it's more difficult for the missile to correct even a small heading error. But if the maximum lateral acceleration is increased, then the missile can correct larger heading errors and the intercept becomes easier. So let's think about a hypersonic missile advertised to travel at Mach 10. And by the way, that's Mach 10 at some point in its flight trajectory, not necessarily for the whole flight. And the Mach number is the ratio of the missile speed to the speed of sound where the missile is. And since the speed of sound becomes still slower at higher altitude, what might be Mach 10 at 20 kilometers altitude is not Mach 10 at sea level, it's slower at sea level. So based on the intercept corridor formulation and principles, I expect a hypersonic missile to slow down when it gets close to the target so it can get the most out of the maneuverability uh, uh, of the maximum lateral acceleration that the designers have put into the airframe. Maybe the missile flares its fins a bit near the end to slow down. The idea is that the missile speed and lateral acceleration can be traded against each other to make it as easy as possible for the missile to hit the target, and the trade-off creates the shape of the intercept corridor. Anyway, with a formalization of soft kill, we can now talk about the missile range at which soft kill occurs, which is shown by a marker uh, and a line in this video clip and uh, different colors for each of the three ships. And we can distinguish between soft kill range and minimum miss distance. Uh, and that's an orange line shown in this video clip. Uh, a marker appears when the soft kill happens for each ship and an orange line shows the miss distance. It's interesting that soft kill happens before the missile makes its closest approach to the target. I've heard a lot of noise over the many years I've been working in this field about miss distance. What's really relevant to the countermeasure deployment is the range at which the missile is no longer a threat to a particular ship or aircraft. And the reason that's important is because it's safe to, for the countermeasure system to ignore soft-killed missiles and concentrate on their defensive weapons, which is hard kill and soft kill, on the remaining ones, the ones that are still dangerous, and just knock them off one at a time. But now we have a, no, a way of knowing which ones are no longer a threat, even though they're still in the air. So let's take a look at the 3D version of the intercept corridor. If the missile is guided in azimuth and elevation, then the corridor becomes a funnel. So let's change the missile altitude here. And, uh, well, let's turn on the 3D visualization and change the climb angle. If the missile points down, the corridor points up, which is the analog of uh, if the missile points left, the corridor points right, that kind of thing. And uh, as the missile swings around in 
azimuth and uh, changes its climax angle, the corridor, the funnel now, uh, changes position exactly the same as it does in two dimensions, but it's now in three dimensions. And if we zoom out a little bit and change the missile velocity, make it move faster, fly faster, then the corridor becomes uh, long and skinny, just like it does in, uh, in a, a, a single plane. And uh, as, as in the uh, single plane case, if we increase the maximum lateral acceleration, the corridor response, or the funnel response by becoming uh, 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 shallower. It, it's all the same as in single plane, but uh, it's happening in, uh, in two dimensions or three dimensions, excuse me. And we can look at the ship point of view, which is maybe a little bit more instructive. Here I'm increasing, decreasing the velo missile velocity, the speed, and increasing it. And uh, now I'll increase the lateral acceleration. And it has uh, antagonistic to the missile speed, as we saw before. And although there is a lot more to say on the subject of the intercept corridor or the intercept funnel, this concludes a brief introduction to a formalization of missile soft kill.